This is the first lecture in a series of math lectures on Algebra 1. Today's topic is Geometry Review. We're going to start this series with a bunch of videos that review 7th and 8th grade math before we dive into Algebra 1. And today we are going to specifically look at perimeter and area of basic shapes. And there's four shapes we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the circle, the square, the rectangle, and the triangle. And a reminder, the perimeter is the distance around an object. So we could add up the distance around an object, or in the case of a circle, we call that the circumference, and there's a special formula for that. And the area is the number of unit squares that are contained in the figure. So if you had one by one squares in a certain figure, it would be how many squares would fill that figure that are one by one, that is the area. And the area is given in square units, like square feet, square miles, and so forth. So the first figure we're gonna look at is the square. The square has four sides, one, two, three, four. All of the sides are equal, and I let S represent the length of the side, and you can see that they're all equal. All the sides here are length S. And all of the sides intersect at right angles. And there, this is important because there is a figure that has four equal sides that don't intersect at right angles. That's called a rhombus, and we will look at that later in geometry, much, much later. But for now, we're going to stick with the square, and they have four right angles. And two of the sides are parallel. This side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. And to find the perimeter, we just add up the sides. We take a side plus the side plus this side plus this side, and we can write it in a formula like this. And then we combine like terms. There's four S's here. So we can also write the perimeter as 4 times S. And the area, if we wanted to find out how many smaller unit 1 by 1 squares were in here, well, this could be, if this was a 5, there would be 5 lines here and there will be five lines here. And if you cross them, you could visually see that there would be 25 squares inside this square if these lengths were five. So to find the area of a square, you just multiply the side by itself, which is also known as s squared, or s to the power two. The next shape we're gonna look at is rectangle. A rectangle also has four sides, one, two, three, four. And two of the sides are equal, not all four. So this side we call the length, and this side we call the width. And it is OK to interchange length and width, because I could flop this rotated on its side, and then either way. It's OK to, to interchange the variables. It doesn't matter specifically which one the width and which one is the length. A rectangle also intersects at right angles in the corners. There is a figure that has two, two sets of equal sides like this that don't intersect at right angles. Those are called a parallelogram. Again, we'll look at those much later in geometry. Two of the sides are parallel. This side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. So to find the perimeter, we would add up around. We have the length plus the length plus this width plus this width, and it would give us this formula here. Now we can simplify this formula sum because there's two L's and two W's. When we combine like terms, this is equal to two L's plus two W's. And again, this next formula we might see somewhere on a test format like SAT or something down the, down the road. Uh, you can factor a 2 out, and this is another way of writing the formula. Uh, two, we add up, the, add up the, uh, the length and the width, and then multiply that by 2. The area is very similar to the area of the squared. It's just the length times the width, and that would tell us how many unit squares are inside this rectangle. The next figure we're going to look at is the triangle. A triangle is a three-sided figure. The height of the triangle, which is important here, the height of the triangle is perpendicular to the base. And any of these three can be rotated to be the base. But in this case, if this is the base, 
this is the height that corresponds to this base and they intersect at right angles and the formula for the perimeter we just add up the sides and I just gave these like nonchalant names side one side two and we just add around there's no way to simplify this formula you just add up the three sides so it's base plus side one plus side two now the area can be expressed in two different ways these two formulas mean the exact same thing it's the base times the height times one half or the base times the height divided by two whichever way you see it better is which way you should use the formula for the next figure we're going to look at is the circle now the circle what's important about the circle is all of these points on the circle are e are the same distance from the center and that's what makes it a circle a circle has no sides or you could say that it has infinite sides either or the diameter of the circle is a line from one edge to a circle to the other but it goes through the center of the circle so the diameter and we call this a line that goes from one side to another side we call that a chord but we're not really going to get specific about circles this chord is a diameter because it goes through the center the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle and one thing if I put another radius over here uh, two radiuses would be a diameter so the diameter is twice the length of the radius the circumference is the distance around one revolution of the circle so if I start here and I took a string and I measured all the way around here and then stretched the string out where I marked where I was and then measured it that would be the circumference of the circle and a common no number used in circles is pi this is the Greek letter pi and it is approximately 3.14 its exact number you can't write because it never stops the decimals never stop so if we use a decimal form of a calculation with pi we have to use the word approximately so let's look at the formulas for circle the circle is equal to 2 times pi times the radius so we find the radius we multiply it by 2 and then we multiply that number by pi and that will give us the circumference but remember that two radiuses make up a diameter so you could also remember the formula as pi times the diameter and numerically this looks like 2 times 3.14 times the radius the area of the circle is pi times the radius squared so we find the radius we multiply it by itself and then we multiply that number by 3.14 and that looks like this it's approximately 3.14 times the radius squared I'm gonna put all the formulas up on the screen for you to look at and write down if you need to if you have to press pause if I was going too fast and you need a minute to write down all the formulas uh, take a time and review press pause and review some of these formulas they are very important okay let's get into some examples in this example we're going to find the perimeter of the rectangle below so I'm going to put the formula remember that the perimeter is twice the length plus twice the width because there's a length over here and a five over here so when we substitute we can substitute the length as eight and the width is five so we're going to calculate this here and using the op order of operations we multiply first and 2 times 8 is 16 and 2 times 5 is 10 and then we can add these together to find the perimeter at 16 plus 10 is 26 so the perimeter of this rectangle is 26 inches and again I can't exaggerate enough the importance of using the measurement in your answer because a measurement without a unit is meaningless if you just said the perimeter of the rectangle is 26 that would mean nothing 26 miles 26 feet 26 no, 26 
inches. So always include that unit in your answer. In this example, we're going to find the perimeter of the triangle below. So remember, we just add up the three sides. So side 1 could be 4, side 2 could be 5, and side 3 could be 7. And when we add these up from left to right, 4 plus 5 is 9, and 9 plus 7 is 16. And we state that the perimeter of the triangle is 16 feet. In this example, we're going to find the perimeter of the square. And we're only given one side, but remember that all of the sides of a square are equal. And it is given that it is a square. So the perimeter is 4 times that side. And that side length is 5. And 4 times 5 is 20. So the perimeter of this square is 20 meters. In this example, we're going to find the area of a circle with a radius of 8 feet. OK, so the formula for the area of a, radi uh, area of a circle is pi r squared. So the radius r is 8. When we substitute that in, we get pi times 8 squared square feet. The units in area are square feet. So 8 squared we do first by the order of operations, and 8 squared is 64. So we can say that the area is 64 pi square feet. But if you were in the real world, if you went to the lumber yard and the man asks you how, many, how much lumber do you want and you said 64 pi square feet, he might look at you funny. So we can go ahead and calculate this out by approximating the answer. 64 times 3.14 square feet. And 64 times 3.14 is 200.96 square feet. So we can say the area of the circle is approximately 201 square feet or 200.96 square feet, however accurate your instructor wants you to make it or however accurate you need to make the measurement. In the next example, we're going to find the area of the triangle below. And we have a right triangle here. And the formula is the area is the base times the height divided by 2. Now, remember, the base and the height have to intersect at right angles. And since this is a right triangle, this is the case we have here. So the height here is 7, and the base is 12. Let's substitute those in. So the base is 12 and the height is 7 and we can uh, there's two ways you could calculate this you could divide 12 by 2 and get 6 and 6 times 7 is 42 or you could multiply 12 times 7 and get 84 and then 84 divided by 2 is 42 either way the area of this triangle is 42 square inches all right, that's going to conclude this lecture, short and sweet. What's next? We're going to review combinations in lecture two, and we're going to do a little bit of tree diagrams. I'd like to remind everyone that this video is sponsored by Math-Based Tutoring. You can click the, uh, the link below in the description, and if you need tutoring for not just Algebra 1, for all levels of math, calculus, post-calculus, pre-calculus, we can do it all from the comfort of your home at a reasonable price. So just uh, send, send me a tell, a message on Facebook, and we can set you straight. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in Lecture 2.